Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Don't Open Your Eyes. A horror game where you're just laying in bed and someone just starts talking to you. They may or may not be a monster, and you'll find out. So, don't open your eyes, it actually has voice acting, from what the description says, and um... So I have not played this before, I've played the developer's other game, which is called Radio Signal, it's their more recent one. But I believe both are a similar theme of having a kind of very like monochrome color scheme. Um, and some kind of creepy voice talking to you. My eyelids have begun to feel heavy. I better go to sleep. I'll leave aside the book I've been reading and look out my window. The process of falling asleep is always a struggle against noise. Barking dogs, police sirens, or even my own intrusive thoughts. But not even the turning gears in my brain are producing much sound. The night is just oddly quiet. Quiet. A good step for a horror situation. It's so quiet. Too quiet, <laughs> see? I feel restless. My sight veers towards the hallway outside my door. The distance between my room and the opposite wall is only ten steps long. I know, since I made a habit of counting them whenever I go out. One, two, triple, absentmindedly, but always. I don't know why. I may just like being aware of my surroundings, to the smallest details. But tonight is different. The hallway looks like it stretches into nothingness, like the throat of a gargantuan beast. Logical thinking cries that it's just my imagination. There can't be anything wrong or different about it. It's just a hallway. But... I don't want to look at it. So I take a deep breath and close my eyes. In my room. There's a bed. In my room. There's a wardrobe. In my room. There's pictures framed on the wall. Are you gonna go like, in my room, there's a monster right there? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, we'll see. My room is a part of myself. It's a world I know like the back of my hand. For someone to blindfold me and ask me to find my way around, I do so without the slightest difficulty. As long as nothing changes, having my eyes closed makes no difference. In this room, I can always find what I want to find. Because in this room, I know how everything looks. Except me. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for that jump scare. I need to wake up early tomorrow. I should really try to sleep. What's that sound? Are those footsteps? Getting a little closer. Maybe they just go into the kitchen. No, that's impossible. It must be my imagination. But it's getting closer. And closer. And closer. And closer. And closer. They are gone. Right. There's no way someone could be there. Hey. How you doing? Hey. Ha! Oh look, they said hey back. Open your eyes. Nah, I'm cool. Do I open my eyes? I, I get the idea of what's going to happen here. So we're going to visualize, based on our closed eyes and perception, what we think you look like. I don't open my eyes. Open your eyes. Nah, I'm cool. Look at me. I do my best to ignore the voice. Why won't you look at me? Because I don't want to. I have a choice here. Where are your manners? 
Not for you. If a stranger asks for help, is it right to ignore them? Ye. Is that how it is? Ye. I can feel someone breathing on my ear. It's cold. I will share a secret with you. It feels like I ordered an ASMR service. Straight to your door. Uber ASMR. I have never seen myself before. I don't know if my face is ugly. I don't know the color of my skin. I don't know if I'm even here. That is why I need you to open your eyes so you can tell me how I look. But I'm also shy, so I might hide the moment you do. You won't find me anywhere. And soon, you will forget like a faded dream. I know you're not asleep. Yeah, I am. Listen. Those tiny ears of yours, they look so fragile, like I could almost grab them. I feel something caress my ear. Put my fingers around them. And tear them off. I was starting to sound kind of sultry till that part. You know. If I do, will you scream? Will I hear your voice? No. Ha! I'm joking. Don't be scared. Regular old joker. Hey. Hey. How do you think my eyes look? Not as good as mine. When our cases finally meet, what will you find? Answer me. This does come off like weirdly. Like. It's creepy, but like, it, there's like this weird little romantic angle. In different contexts, this would sound a lot better. They look broken, they look empty, they look lost. Let's try... Lost. They look... Lost. That may be so. I am never sure of where I am. My days consist of wandering about aimlessly, searching for... Something. I worry that if I'm not paying attention, what I'm searching for will slip away. The thought terrifies me. It terrifies me so much. So I always keep my eyes peeled, even if there's nothing to see. That way, nothing will slip away, no matter where it goes. And no matter where it hides, no matter how terrifying the world might be. No matter the countless terrible things I witness by mistake in the process, no matter what, I will never blink. I will forever be confused by the worlds around me. I will forever be lost. But what is that something that I'm searching for? It's been so long since my wandering began. I can no longer recall the feelings that drove me to it. What is it? Is it something I can hold? Is it a being of flesh and bones? Is it nearby? Is it you? Hmm. Hey. Hey. Have you ever looked so fervently for something that you end up losing yourself in the process? Have you? Sure. I remain silent, except for my inner monologue. These eyes. Are these... My eyes. I guess we have an option of going back. Let's go of yes. I like Good them. Answer. Yet there is only one way to know the truth. Open your eyes. Nah. No. So you won't look at me, even though your eyes are so pretty. That's true. I won't deny that. I can't see them, but I can imagine them behind their veil of flesh, round like pearls and shiny like jewels. So, so pretty. <sighs> a breath of cold air caresses my eyelashes. It's fine. We still have time. No, we don't. You should leave. The night is still. And silent. Nope, it's gonna be morning in about an hour. I think lost was a good choice, though. You do sound lost. Creepy, but lost.
symbolic for like the barriers we all each have. Of course you know. You have one right there at the verge of your little world. A door is a barrier to keep the bad out. The bad can be anything. A bad person, a bad smell, and sometimes me. True. I can't open doors. I find them tricky. Should I push or pull? Should I turn the knob left or right? Should I try to take it off its hinges? Should I chip away at it, hoping it will fall apart? And what happens when it opens? Do I close it behind me? Do I keep it open? But that might be rude to the person who had it closed. But then, how do I get out? And what happens if the wind pushes it close? What then? So many options. Entire thing you just described was some kind of symbolism for connections, wasn't it? And entering other people's lives. So many things that could go wrong. And then hesitation of entering those lives. Whenever I stand in front of a closed door, it paralyzes me. I stare at it for a long time. Or you could also just be a vampire monster. But I like to think it's the former. And think of my excuses. Because that's all they are. What bothers me the most about closed doors is the idea they exist to keep me out. It fills me with the need to go in. So I search for a crevice or a window. Anything that might be open. Anything that might let me in. I'm not good with doors. But as long as there's a place where I can fit, then I can go in anywhere. Every night, I hop across the shadows of the streets. I'm careful. So as to not be caught by the light. In my internal search, I pick a place where to rest. I slip in and spend the night wherever is comfortable. Without alerting anyone. Usually it's a cellar. An attic. Anywhere with dust. With dirt. I feel at home there. But sometimes, just sometimes, an urge swells inside of me. The urge to be seen. So I search hard. For a door that's open, for an entryway covered in darkness, and for someone to be at the other end, awake, as if expecting me. This is what we get for leaving our door open. But you won't look at me, even though you had your door open for visitors. Why is that? Are you afraid? Do I scare you? No, that can't be it. We have been chatting for so long. Uh, about 14 minutes. You haven't chased me out. That means you welcome me. So I'm certain that if I were to reach out my hand. So he moves over my bed sheets. You would reciprocate and grasp it. No. I'm sure your hands are warm. That's true. So very warm. I'm not denying that, but still, no. Because people. No, as nice as mine. When my warmth finally meets yours, how will it feel? Answer me. You look tired. You look incomplete. Let's go with tired. They look tired. Man, those are some nice nails you got there, buddy. That may be so. These fingers of mine have touched so many things. They are always. Stretching forwards, reaching out for something. The tip of my fingers dance over the surfaces that I travel, and their sensations reach the core of my brain. Be it the softness of the first spring flowers, or the roughness of a wall made out of rubbish. Caressing, grabbing, clawing, no matter the time of day, no matter if I'm awake or asleep, as if... They had a mind of their own. Even now, they clutch onto the fabric of your bed sheets. They like how these thousands of threads intertwine with each other. That's a very specific description of bed sheets. The rustle of fabric against fabric, of skin against skin, is irresistible. They want more. They want to feel closer. To have it between them and around them, more and more, and sometimes, how 
however, they can reach as far as they'd like. That's when I lend a hand. I take over and stretch, 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 and they grow. Maybe just the length of a fingernail every time, but they grow just so they can reach out, clutch what they want, and then throw it aside, discarded, and forgotten. That's why they are tired, because they never stop seeking, and most likely, never will. Hey, have you ever stretched your fingers to grab a hold of something important? I'm still gonna go with all these dialogues sounding like connections. Only to learn that it's been long out of your grasp, have you? I remain silent. These hands are these. My hands. Go VS. A good answer. Yet, there is only one way to know the truth. Open your eyes. Do I open my eyes? No. So you won't look at me, even though my hands could be the same as yours. Think about it. Maybe you and I are similar. No, I know we are. I can feel it in my skin. Oh. Can you hear it? My skin is pulsating. You're not going to have me describe your skin, are you? It has been long since this happened. Also, I think that's your heart. It's a sign of my innermost emotions flowing out. I wander the world, wanting to be seen. I'll be satisfied as long as someone tells me how I look, but it's not like anyone will do. If it did, then it would be oh so easy, since I could show myself to everyone at once. Every living person in this land, and ask them all the same question. Someone will answer. There's no doubt about it, but it might not be the answer I wish for. Since I don't want to be judged, I don't want to be perceived as something I'm not. I'm trying to bait. Is opening your eyes the good end? But the game's called Don't Open Your Eyes. I feel like it's implying don't open your eyes. It scares me. That is why, when someone is on the verge of looking at me, I shy away, I hide, fading into the dark. They could also be that if you open your eyes at the wrong time, they shy away, meaning nothing happens. But you might be different. If it's you, it might be possible to stand still, if only for a second. That way you can help me, and we can both be fulfilled. Just thinking about it, it makes me feel... Doki. Feel something. I cannot describe it. I am not good with words. There was a person in my past who taught me to speak like a person. They were not good at it either. And thinking back on it, they certainly didn't enjoy it. To teach a wordless being how to talk must be a challenge. Yet, they did. Simply because they could. It is weird to remember, because it makes me think of why I want to be seen. I mean, you could be a monster of some kind. The jury's still out on that. And I am not. Sure, I don't care much for my appearance. I don't want to be judged. So why is it? Why do I want someone to recognize me so much? Maybe it's only because I can. Because everyone gets to be recognized. But me. But I will. Soon. Once you open your eyes. Ah. There it is again. Just thinking about the moment you unveil your sight onto me. And you finally take those bed sheets off your body. Okay, one thing at a time, buddy. And you inspect every crevice of mine. And you finally, finally, finally open those tight lips of yours. I heard the V8 like crack for a brief second there. I got one of those little eyes. To let me hear what I am. And to maybe even give me a name. It makes me feel... Surely it would be evident if you were to look at my 
my face. You want me to describe your face now? Hey, what does my expression look like when that veil of uncertainty finally disappears? What will we convey to each other? Answer me. What does your expression look like? A cheerful smile, a surprised grimace. Let's go with a surprised grimace. A surprised grimace. Ha! That is a little quirky. I'm not sure if I like that. That may be so. Tonight is the first I hear about my eyes. Or my hands. And the new and unexpected is always a source of surprise. People always act surprised when I show myself before them. So it makes sense. That my appearance would surprise me as well. At times, they stop moving. Merely looking at me in awe. At others, they scream. And run and exhaust themselves to the point they can't think. Others, they don't feel much at all. They sit and stay and attempt to talk. How does the violator mouth, you know, from Spawn, a surprise grimace? I don't like when they do that. It's like they are not seeing me, not recognizing me. I much prefer when they freeze. I much prefer when they scream a reaction. Is what I want. It's a sign that I am there and that my existence means something to them. That's why I like you. You did not scream, yet you did not run either. You were surprised and averted your eyes, but instead you stayed, listening, acknowledging you are the first to do this for me. You are new and unexpected, yet how odd. I am a bit of a quirky guy. Is this really surprise? No. You say it is, so it must be true. But what I'm feeling right now, what I'm experiencing, it's not the same as those who've seen me. As if their surprise was something different from mine. Hey, have you ever acted surprised? Not because you are, but because you believe that's how you must feel. Have you? I remain silent. This expression is this. My expression? Is that so? What does my expression when that fell of uncertain end? Let's go with an emotionless stare. An emotionless stare. Yeah, that, that kind of fits. Go with the odd world look. That maybe so. Expressions are difficult. They require one's face to contort in many different ways. I am not capable of that. Everything about me is stiff, from the way I walk, to the way I talk, to the way I feel. It is something I noticed long ago. I may hurt and I may grow, but I do not change, not in the way other people do. People interact with each other, they form connections, they experience thrills. A person becomes someone different with each passing second, turning old and perishing. However, I don't think I'm capable of any of those things. My journey began long ago, longer than any person has ever journeyed. And in my life, I have seen others born and die. Born and die. A person's existence is so fleeting. And yet, so many things happen to them. So many worthwhile memories. So it could be never being... But I, I think the the being is symbolic for like what I said. Because every dialogue I feel like has to do with connections. The nature of people, how they connect. And like the nature of how their lives interact. And like, kind of like... The best way to describe it is like, imagine a bunch of bubbles passing by each other and never interacting. But then two bubbles touch. He's more like a soap bubble, not like a pop goes the weasel bubble. And they kind of merge into one super bubble. In a sense, like the two bubbles become one. And the two beings in those bubbles can interact. But this person is always in a bubble that never touches anything. So that's how I'm taking it. It is something I lack. Were I to write a book, I could not fill a single page. It's not for the lack of memories, but rather because these memories mean nothing to me, save for a minuscule number. They are all the same. Blending with each other into a mottled gray. Lacking the meaning people often give to that which they care about. Perhaps, if 
if someone else had left what I had, they would see meaning, they would treasure it, but I cannot, no matter how I try, I can't see any worth in what I do, and by extension, in what I am, I want for someone to tell me how I look, yet, I don't see that as important, no one but me would care, so why should I care, but that doesn't mean I have never felt, I feel things, joy, sorrow, fear, I am always feeling, and right now, I am feeling strongly, it's here, in my pulsating skin, you say my expression is, emotionless, that it shows, nothing, and if you say so, it must be true, but soon you will see something, because what I'm feeling, is not nothing, hey, have you ever masked yourself with indifference, only to hide the overwhelming emotions hiding beneath, ye, yeah. have you, I remain silent, this expression, is this, my expression, I guess we'll go over this, I see, on the bubble note, me personally, I've always seen live as more as a stage play. Basically, everyone's got their own little show or story. And when lives interact, it's like someone else is like, in a sense, guest casted on their show and walks on stage. And when their lives separate, then they person walks off stage. So like a relationship. If someone breaks up, it's like that person's apparently like, hey, see you later, audience, and walks off the stage and out of your life. But then the show keeps going, in a sense, just without that actor. Thank you. You have truly helped me tonight. These are my eyes. These are my hands. And this is my expression. I consider these my most treasured features. And you have helped me picture them all. No one has done this for me. I feel a connection with you. I think there's also something here about how you view yourself through the eyes of others. One born out of honest gratitude. Like how others perceive you is how you shape your own internal image, per se. But there's one step left. Open your eyes. You need to make sure of the truth. Open them. It is the only way to finally understand each other. So please, I beg of you. No. No. The game's called Don't Open Your Eyes. Although it has like, I think it's like giving me the option. I, I understand. No, it's fine. You have still helped me by answering my questions. No one has done that for me before, so I have no right to ask for anything else. So are uh, we done here? No. Oh crap. That is a lie. Ever since I stepped into this room, you have refused to engage with me. Not even once. 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 Maybe we should have opened our eyes. Not even once. Did you open your eyes? Not even once. Did you look at my face? You stayed there, acting as if you were asleep, feigning ignorance and not moving an inch. At times making me believe that our conversation was just in my head. You haven't opened your mouth, but you didn't need to. I can hear far, far beyond what most others can, and I can't see further than what others would consider the dark, empty bottom. That's why I know that I wasn't wrong. You are like me. We are the same. You too. Look for what's not there. You too. Reach out for what might hurt you, and you too are a liar. The type that shows one thing and feels another. But you made a mistake. I know you're lying, because every answer you've given me so far has been wrong. I am not what you said I am. These eyes, these hands, this expression. They aren't mine. Maybe they are yours, but I do not care. Not anymore. Open your eyes. Oh, it looks like I don't have a choice. I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want to be perceived for something I'm not. And that's 
all you did. So now, you will open your eyes and see me for what I truly am. You said so. Remember that in this room, you know how everything looks. It was those words that brought me here. So you have to, you have to do right by that which you claimed. It is time. Open your eyes. Are we going to keep refusing? Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Open my eyes? Ooh, the final choice. No. You had your chance. Uh-oh. It's not up to you anymore. You won't open your eyes. I will. Aw, oh, crap. Something calls me on my head. Pressure on my skull is unbearable. Okay, this is real. This is not a dream. I hear something shatter. You know, I can't open my eyes if you crush my skull. Ah, uh, your eyes are as beautiful as I imagined. Tell me, my new friend, what do you see? I want to answer, but they grabbed onto my head and won't let me talk. But what I see, what I see is... I close my eyes. That won't do. Open your eyes. Open them. Open them now. Open, open, open. Open, open, open. After the tell this game lie to us. It seems I did it again. You can't see anymore, right? You can't talk anymore, right? You can't think anymore, right? Then, this is farewell. Thank you for trying, friend. Even though you are a liar, I leave this piece of myself here with you. I must go. I must look for the right person. Someone who can tell me how I look. Someone who can explain to me why everyone looks like that when they do. Although I did put the don't part in brackets. That could imply, like, don't or open your eyes. There's something in my hand. It's what they left behind. What is it? It feels important. Did they leave an eye? But I can no longer open my eyes. Well, I mean, now we really can't open our eyes. Let's say yes. You had your chance. It's not up to you anymore. You won't open your I will. Okay, so that leaves the same thing. Now let's try saying yes. This is before the final choice. Nothing's there. There's nothing there. It did say that they would disappear and maybe get shy. But you lived, because you opened your eyes. So I guess that's it for don't open your eyes. So technically to get the ending, you have to not open your eyes. Although it's a bad ending. Opening your eyes is the good ending. Uh, and I checked the developers. When they made the radio signal, they actually went back to this game and left like a little uh, kind of a message about this game a bit. So I was pretty much right that it was about the, the nature of how others perceive you and the fear of connection and all that stuff like that. I guess the monster is real. Like, like, there is something there. It's not like Radio Signal, where it was a little more symbolic all the way. Well, maybe the giant chicken wasn't symbolic. Or maybe it was. Who knows? So we have our monster. 
looks like its true form was something you couldn't even begin to describe. It was just squigglies and like star, almost star shaped eyes. Bit of slight kind of love crafting, like you can't observe kind of thing. But all of that was just kind of creepiness factor to kind of fluff and atmosphere out the game. If we go out to its core, its core is, of course, the story and the kind of message it's trying to tell about how someone, you know, is kind of trying to cope with this kind of, uh, like I said, perception and everything. Like, do people perceive me as scary? Do they perceive me as shifty or untrustworthy? Do they perceive me as good or bad looking? So it's dealing with that social fear. And our monster is afraid, symbolically anyway, to approach people because they are afraid of inherently being judged for whatever kind of perception that they're afraid they're going to be perceived as. So you live unseen. You could almost kind of equate living unseen, going through the dark and the shadows and whatnot as being someone who just like never leaves their house, and like not very often anyway. So that sums up the, the story. I will say, after playing Radio Signal, um, if I had to compare it to, so Radio Signal is more of a true game, per se, like it has a little bit of choice. It also has a pretty decent narration. I actually like Don't Open Your Eyes more, because I think Radio Signal is more isolated in a story, per se. It's like you're connecting to a person that may or may not be you. Well, Don't Open Your Eyes is more trying to be human relatable. Which is also like a little more creepy and a little more familiar. Well, Radio Signal is more of a tragedy, per se. It's like it's less so much scary, more of like sad. So that's how I would kind of rank and perceive the two of them. I think Don't Open Your Eyes also plays off the fear people may be having of someone actually entering into your house when you're asleep, of that vulnerability. And it does a pretty decent job at. Anyway, thank you all for watching me play Don't Open Your Eyes. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.